Hello students, we're going to continue our discussion today on energy and we're going to focus today again on potential energy, kinetic energy, and conservation of energy and that's going to show how potential energy and kinetic energy are very related and how they transfer energy from one to the other. So we're going to start with the definition of potential energy. Potential energy is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position to others. What that means is you need to have objects to have some potential energy. So the objects that I picked, we have Jack Sparrow, we have a very light block, and we have a very heavy book. So I'm going to use these to show potential energy and I'm going to use these to further explain our equation. Potential energy equals the mass of an object, the gravitational force, and the change in height, the height relative to the zero position. So what does that mean? Because when you're looking at it, you just see letters and... So what it, what, it, what it means is, as you add mass and height, you add energy. So the best way I can show you this is we're going to take our friend Jack. He's just going to sit there. And we're going to show how when we move stuff, we create potential energy. So now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to hold it over his head. It's still worry, it's very light, it's a very small height. So if this fell, the energy is very low because the mass, whether this um, body is, is small, and the height is very low. It's only like six inches off the table. So it's going to be a very small amount of energy. So now if I take this, yes, all our hearts drop because we don't want to crush Jack Sparrow. But we see the big difference. Now this book is very heavy and it's a lot higher. So what that shows us is if we take our equation, so to increase our potential energy, we can either increase the mass or if we want to increase the potential energy, we can increase the height. So when we talk about factors affecting potential energy, the mass and the change in height are, are very um, tangible factors. So what I want to do is I want to do a practice calculation with you so that when we do our homework, when we do our work in class tomorrow, that you know, we can re review how we calculate potential energy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the mass of the book. So we're going to assume that the mass of the book is um, one kilogram and we're going to assume that we're going to hold it one meter high. So when we plug in our, our uh, values and we say the mass, oops, that's not going to look right. So let's do it down here, it's, it's easier. Our potential energy, our mass, I'm going to put here, mass equals one kilogram The gravitational force is 9.8 meters per second squared, and our height is 1 meter. So we're going to have 1 times 9.8 by 1 kilogram times 1.98 meters per second squared times 1 meter. So this is going to equal 9.8 kilogram meter square per second square and that is going to be you can take this and that's a joule so joules measure energy so when we calculate our energies we're going to be using joules i use a very simple example because i want to show you <clears throat> that this constant gravity is always the same and then these change so it's a simple equation and what's very important anytime we're doing a physics equation is that we have to have our um, parameters right. So if I gave you something in feet, you have to convert it to meters. If I gave you something in pounds, you have to convert it to kilo kilograms. Okay, so what we've learned here is that potential energy really depends on the mass and the height of an object. So we're gonna take away these. So how does kinetic energy differ from potential energy? Well, kinetic energy is defined as the energy possessed by a body by its virtue of motion. So what we're gonna do, 
So we're going to use some cars. So once again, we have three objects, and right now there's no energy. There's no potential energy, I'm sorry. There's no kinetic energy because they're not, they're not moving. So what we're, we're going to do is we're going to look at the equation. Kinetic energy is one half of the mass times the velocity squared. So what that means is we have our friend Jack, and he's crossing the, the road. If a little car comes really slow, the energy is going to be small. If we have a bigger car coming very fast, the energy is going to be increased. So just like we talked about here, if you want to increase the kinetic energy, then you can increase the mass. If you want to increase the kinetic energy, then you can increase the velocity. And something really interesting about kinetic energy and why velocity is such a factor there's been studies that show if you drive a car 25 miles per hour and if you drive a car 30 miles an hour, if you hit someone driving 30 miles an hour, you're twice more likely to really injure that person. And the, the reason for that is anytime you increase speed, if you double speed, you actually quadruple speed because it's square. So that's a very important concept to understand is that the change in speed significantly changes the kinetic energy. So when you're driving, when you're crossing a street, that is, that's why you really have to be careful. If someone's going fast, you're driving fast, you guys are in high school, you're in 11th grade, is something that you guys are living right now. So when, when you're thinking of going faster, just remember, anytime you increase speed, you're not doubling it, you're quadrupling it. So it's very, very important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a simple equation so we can show how um, we calculate kinetic energy. So for the kinetic energy, we are going to <clears throat> just plug in some values. So we're going to say our, our mass is 1,000 kilograms, and we're going to say our velocity is 10 meters per second. So when we calculate that into our, when we figure that into our equation, we're going to have 0.5 times our mass, so that's 1,000 kilograms. And then we're going to have 10 meters per second. We're going to square that. And what's going to happen is, if you look at over here, when we finish, we're going to have kilogram meters squared per second squared. It's the same as this. So you're still creating a joule because you're still creating energy. So when we work through this, this, this problem, <clears throat> um, it's 0.5 times 1,000 times 100 meters squared per second squared. And that equals, I'm going to use a calculator just so the calculation's right. And never be afraid to use a calculator because when you're doing work, you want to be credited for everything that you do right. So that comes to 50,000 joules. Okay, so now we've seen potential energy is something that is potential, that can be. It's not there yet, but it can be. And kinetic energy is when that, when that object moves. It creates energy. So these two um, work in conservation of energy. Energy cannot be created or destroyed, but can be altered from one form to another. So what, what happens is we're going to use a skate park as an, as an example. So if you have a skate ramp, then the skate ramp was like this and like this. I don't know if they didn't use skateboard, but those guys do a really good job. Because that's scary. So that's the height. So if our height here is 10 and our bottom here is 0, what that's going to show is when our skateboard guy, when he's on top of his board, 
when he's on top of his board, his potential energy is at its maximum. So right here would be your max potential energy. And his kinetic energy at this, this point is zero. So this would be your least kinetic energy. Because right now he's, he's, not, he's not moving. He's waiting to go down the ramp and build his speed up and do his tricks. So it's really cool when he goes down, as he goes down the ramp, then you start to see a change. Your potential energy goes down because your height goes down. And now your kinetic energy goes up because your velocity goes up. And you can use the equations to calculate exact values. But for right, right now, just I want you guys to really look at, the, at the, the concept. These are related and the energy gets transferred. So potential energy starts to go down and kinetic energy goes up. So your energy in the system stays. And this is assuming that there's no friction. When you have friction, you lose energy. So what we're going to be doing in class, I want you guys to think about what other kind of Thing that you've used or seen or been on that uses this conservation of energy principle. So that's what we're going to work on in class tomorrow. So please review the lesson again if you need to and come prepared to class with any questions. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow.